Hello, my friends. This is Andy with the Facebook Live TV show coming to you live from Brea, California, where it is still rainy. You know, it's the worst thing that you are not only uh, quarantined, but uh, it, it, while we still can go and walk around, we can't walk around because we have flash flood warnings <laughs> and it's been raining in Southern California. How about that? All right. I have a great show planned for you today. Uh, you've been hearing me talk over the last uh, couple of weeks about, you know, why you're, uh, you know, stuck in your home. Uh, that you just don't want to be stuck in a chair or stuck on your couch, that you should be doing something else. There's there's tons of things that I know that you have experienced in your life that could change somebody else's life. And one of those things uh, that you can do with that information is write a book. And uh, I got a stack of books that I've written. These are uh, a number of my books that I've written. I'm a nine time number one bestselling author. And that's because I realized that, it, it, that uh, through a marketing uh, a group of people in, in uh, San Diego uh, that I went to some years ago where I met one of our guests, uh, both of our guests, what am I saying? One of our guests, <laughs> um, that uh, utilizing uh, being a number one bestselling author to um, create your authority, to get on television, to get on stage. And it all started with this book right here, Falco Walking with God and a Dog, uh, which was the um, thing that I came up with when I was broke and was struggling to maintain my house and uh, actually had to sleep in my car at the event in San Diego, uh, where I was taught about how to use a book uh, to create your authority uh, that changed my life. I was able to save my house. I was able to save uh, one of my businesses and then went on to now teaching other people how to do the same thing. And uh, right after this video, we're gonna jump into this, uh, this great program that my friends, uh, Melanie Johnson and Jen Foster have created. It's a book writing camp, a virtual book writing camp. And as soon as this video is over, we're gonna get started talking about how you can join them in this camp. It's gonna be fun. All right. <laughs> Hello, guys. How you doing? Awesome. Hey, if that oh, opens that gets you in the mood to have fun and learn, I don't know what does. I know. I'm so happy that I use that music because it does the same thing for me. I, even when I start to come on and I'm kind of like, oh, you know, it, it's early in the morning or something like that. By the time it's over, I'm ready to go. So uh, let's jump into this right away because I know that over the last couple of weeks, I've had a number of people that are interested in writing their book. Uh, some people say they even have two books that they've had in them that they just can't seem to get off started and I, uh, I I think this is what this this camp I almost call it a boot camp but it's not called a boot camp it's called camp um, okay. will help it's people get going so first of all I want to know why people should actually be listening to you guys and so Jen why don't we start with you uh, what you know why why should people count on you uh, and your team to help them write a book just from your perspective yeah, well, I've been in the book industry for about five years. I wrote my first book about the same time that you did, Andy. And uh, it did it did change my life, that expert status. Um, and so book writing, you know, right now we're quarantined. So instead of being bored, it's the greatest time to write a book. So taking three days at, out of your week and writing the book or at least getting the ideas down and getting ready to make sure that you can publish that book. Awesome. Melanie Foster, you used to own a uh, TV net, not yeah, network. Was Melanie but, uh, Johnson, but you know. Oh, if I, yeah. <laughs> oh what did I say? But I said. <laughs> you know what? I have a friend named Melanie Foster, and I struggle with that constantly. And between the two of you, it messes me up every time. <laughs> Melanie yeah. Johnson. <laughs> Tell me more about you, Melanie Johnson. Okay, so yeah, and you were saying why should people listen to us? Um, and I'll just brag because Jen is so humble that yeah, Jen and I together we have published over twenty six hundred books. Um, we published a lot of those for ourselves. For other people, we've done probably over one hundred and fifty books for other authors, which we've all made uh, number one bestsellers and mostly um, in multiple categories. So we've looked at a lot of books. We have a VIP day that we do for exclusive clients um, that pay us. Like we have one coming up this Friday that we're spending. I'm spending a whole day with me and one of our book writing coaches all day long and we're going to craft his book and get it all laid out and then get the rough draft growing for him. So we're taking that same concept, that proven concept and um, strategies that we use to help our one on one clients that pay us a lot of money to do this. And we're transferring it into doing it in a group way over three days. So the advantage of the three day thing is you're going to have a lot of writing time in there when we do the one day thing. 
it's really about just working nonstop and recording the whole thing. So, um, yeah, so I think that's what qualifies us. We've been in the business for over five years. We're both 14 time number one bestsellers. I want to say Jen is one more than me. I might be 13. She might be 14. Um, so we know what we're doing. Um, my background is media. So I started as a newscaster way back when, and then jumped into owning and operating a TV station and starting it from scratch. For those of you who remember, like there was cable and there was over the air and the FCC had to give you a license and there was only a handful of those stations. Well, that was me and um, and started that from scratch and was still on the air, but did everything, you know, ran advertising, created shows, sold advertising, bought advertising. So I really have this marketing, strong marketing background um, and media background that transcends into publishing and writing. Yeah, I think that's an important background to have because one of the things that we, um, we authors, the people that have been best-selling authors, yeah. use the book for is to get us, get us noticed for television, radio, and that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. your background in television uh, certainly would help somebody understand uh, what it is they need to have as far as a cover, a title, um, you know, the content and that kind of stuff. Is that, mm -hmm. is that one of the things, I'll go ahead and ask Jen, is that one of the things that you really are going to focus on? Uh, in regard to uh, your camp is, is explaining to them why it's important to have a good title, subtitle, content, cover, and that kind of stuff? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we'll go through all of that. We'll go through right. all the beginnings of writing a book. And before all of that, there's even more. There's mindset and getting in the groove of writing and all the writing tips, right? So we're going to go through all of those things in the camp. And I think, so, one of the, sorry to interrupt you. One of the biggest yeah. things I think is the goal of the book. What's the goal of your book? What's the outcome that you want? And who are you writing the book for? So we're really going to hone in on that because a lot of business owners are maybe confused of who their target market is, right? Who their exact customer is and what they should be focusing on to write the book about. Because they may have several ideas and it's getting it down to narrowing it down to the one that's going to serve them the best. I mean, look at you, Andy. You've got like nine different books. You've done all this stuff with, with dogs, but you've transcended each book is a little different. The ones that you have about dog training. Yeah. It's a little funny because, um, I have this one book here in the middle of it, this, uh, becoming uh, fearlessly successful that I wrote. I don't know how long ago, six or seven years ago, I created a podcast behind it. All that kind of stuff has really nothing to do with dog training. However, it was the dog training business and then starting a security company that caused me to, um, nearly go bankrupt <laughs> and uh, lose everything. And um, it was staying focused, uh, not being afraid to go sleep in my truck at an event, uh, again, where I met you guys, um, to, um, you know, just stay focused that, you know, this isn't the end of the world. It's like this thing that we're in right now is not the end of the world. As a matter of fact, it's an opportunity uh, to your future if you use it correctly. You can look at it if you choose, because this is a choice to look at it as the end of the world, when in fact, uh, we have plenty of time now to, to write a book and now you have this three day camp. So I appreciate you saying that, that the, the dog part of my life, the 30 years of being a dog trainer, <laughs> has led to all this other kind of stuff. It's amazing where dog training can take you across the world. And maybe I'll go into that a little bit more later, but um, what do you think, um, and uh, Mel, we'll go ahead and start with you on this one. What do you think is the biggest struggle that most people in your experience, having published 2,500 books now, <clears throat> uh, struggle with in regard to just getting started? What's, what's the hardest thing? What's the thing that's holding them back? So one thing is confidence, right? Having the confidence that someone's going to want to read what they wrote. Again, we were working with um, a couple people that even their their CEOs, their top dogs in their industry, but they're like, what if no one really likes my book? So one of it is that the Jen touched on earlier is that mindset and confidence. And the other thing is the time factor. Oh my gosh, I just don't have time to write a book. But now 80% of the people want to write a book, it says. Um, so, but of that, a very small percentage, maybe 1%, do and a lot of it is a time thing so we've eliminated that time thing we're saying carve out this time put these days aside you're sitting at home trapped and you're, if you're in california you got torrential rains anyways you can't even go outside so take that time carve these three days out and at the end of this coronavirus when you walk out you're going to have your book all outlined, your first draft done. And if you keep working on it, you'll be almost ready to publish. And then we can take it from there and publish it for you. Like visualize that. 
you walk out of this July, August, you're ready to hit the ground running and you have a number one best selling book in your hands for your business. I mean, I think that would be a huge accomplishment for any business owner to have that and really set them apart from everybody else. Yeah. And right. I just want to touch on something real quick um, and say hi to a couple people I saw come in, uh, Nobby and uh, Robin. Hey, guys. Um, but yeah, so what I wanted to um, talk about was on the third day, I'm going to talk about making money with your book because people that are normally into fiction, which is what I've got behind me, right? Um, the way to make money with fiction books is to sell books, right? But the way to make money with a nonfiction book or a book that's teaching someone how to do something or telling your expertise is to uh, not just to sell copies, but to give it away. And we have so many marketing strategies and I'm going to teach this on the third day to actually make money with your book. And I wrote this book, um, my third book that I wrote out of the 14 <laughs> was how to make money with your book, the top 21 ways, even if you haven't written it yet. So we, we can talk about that on the third day. But it's it's really about getting you that expert status and that bestseller and and getting it done. I, like Melanie said, so many people say, oh, I've wanted to write a book, but, you know, I just don't have time or I've wanted to write a book, but the confidence or whatever it is. So now's the time to get it done while we're in this quarantine and maybe put some uh, money in the bank. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And you're going to get the guidance. So that's the, like the third thing if we had to put in there, you know, confidence, the time and then having the guidance. I don't know how to do it. So you're going to be with three experts. You're going to be with Jen, myself, and Kathy Frock. And we are going to walk you step by step, hold your hand through the whole process. You even get a webinar beforehand and a follow-up call afterwards for accountability. So you're not like, is this good? Is it not good? Am I in the right direction? You're going to have someone walk, you're going to have us, not someone, you're going to have us, 14 time international best-selling authors, walking you through this whole process to give you confidence to do it. So um, if you're going to do it, we want 10 business owners is who we're looking at for this first uh, virtual book writing camp. So if you think you're one of those 10 uh, that you want to take the time and have a book at the end um, when you walk out of this, then, then you need to join us. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just saw uh, Robin's comment at the same time, thinking about all that you are saying uh, that I have three things and I hope I don't forget them because I pile the books on my journal that I normally write down the you know future questions I have for you guys. Before I do that, I want to make sure and let everybody know who's watching on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Twitch that make sure and comment uh, because that uh, helps uh, get our video out there so more people can find it organically. I see the numbers going up uh, as far as views and that kind of stuff. So please comment, tell us who, where you're watching from uh, and make sure and ask any questions about the camp and what it is you may need to know to make that final decision. This is a silly, crazy um, uh, if you don't. If you have a book you've been sitting on and you just can't seem to get started, you know, some people, j you just need that that little bit of a push, that little bit of somebody behind it and say, you know, instead of worrying about every punctuation and grammar issue and that kind of stuff, just keep typing. Why are you stopping mm -hmm. uh, to fix those things? Because that's the, what's going to stop you. That's the resistance trying to hold you back is that you're worrying about uh, punctuation and grammar when the only thing you should be worrying about is getting your idea out on paper or on a computer uh, and getting it started. Um, this book uh, right here, the reason I brought these books, this book right here uh, I wrote is called uh, dog training with love and respect. I wrote almost entirely through dictating into my phone and then had it all transcribed. So almost all of this book was created through dictation. Uh, this book took me uh, three years to write, right? It, it, this three year book was a very good book. People seem to like it. They've used it for Bible studies and that kind of stuff, walking with God and the dog. Um, and so I'm going to show you compar comparison. Three years to write this book, it took me three days to write this book. Now, the difference between Dog Sniff Evidence and Falco Walking with God and the Dog, it, it was a little bit of a passion book. I did make some money on the sales of the book. This book I give away. This book has made me nearly somewhere in the neighborhood of about $2 million over the last three or four years. Wow. Um, and it only took me three days to write. <laughs> uh, and I use mostly emails. So I want you to understand that and kind of get a, a grasp of that. Can you do this in three days? Yes. Uh, what can you get? from writing a book in three days, you can get and grow so nearly uh, $2 million over uh, probably less time now because now I've learned how to do it better. Much of that money was made over the last year or two. All right, but I wrote this book about five years ago. I give this book away. I don't sell this book very often, but I do give it away. Uh, and it's gotten me on stage at Caesar's Palace speaking to 800 people, uh, Planet Hollywood, that kind of stuff. And I give it away to everybody that's in the audience. And you're saying, well, that's it. gotta cost you a little bit of money. Well, it's about $2 a book, $2.50 a book. Um, 
And if I give it away to 400, 500, 600 people, that can cost a little bit of money if you can do the math, right? But when I land one client who, who um, uh, based on this book, who hires me to do that, usually that is about $7,000. All right, so if I get one person at $7,000, but it costs me, however that is, $1,600 to give away the book, is that not worth it, right? How much do people pay for, pay for an ad in a, in a Super Bowl um, and to get, you know, uh, you know sell a hamburger? <laughs> I'm giving away just 500 bucks or 600 bucks to get a $7,000 client. And then, you know, normally I just don't get one. Uh, at a Caesars Palace, I think I'm still getting uh, clients and I think I'm on my 14th or 15th client from wow. speaking at Stephen Callis. All right. So you again, you can do the math and, and see what that can get you. So I hope I didn't go on too long, but I, just what you said triggered that in my mind that a three year passion book is fine, right? They're using it in Bible studies. That makes me feel good. I get good emails, uh, but a three days writing, uh, you know, and just buckling down and doing it and get it published. It, it made yeah. a huge difference in my life, right? I can sit in my house. It, it literally saved my house uh, and, and kept me in the home that I'm in right now. So I didn't mean to go on too long. Do you have any, uh, do you want to back any of that up Mel or Jen? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm the, I'm the same. My first book, um, I wrote, I, I got clients from it. I had people call me at three in the morning. I had one guy call me and he's, and he was from Idaho and he's at three in the morning. I have a voicemail and he said, it's three in the morning. I just read your chapter in your book and I'm doing it all wrong. I have a marketing agency and I need you to be my marketing. Can you do white label for me? And all this, it was great. It was, it was so much fun. I mean, client after client because I had that book. Wow. Mel? Yeah. And, and I, I'm just stuck on, I'm going to use that analogy. Like how much money do people pay for a Super Bowl ad to buy, you know, a dollar fifty hamburger? <laughs> I mean, think about that. I mean, the investment in the book and the Super Bowl ad is gone. I mean, now you get to, you can replay it on YouTube, but not many people are necessarily going to be looking for it, but that book is forever and it gives you SEO. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's huge. I love that. Yeah. The one thing that I've learned and I, I, I heard it said, but I also learned this is that, um, people don't throw away a book. They'll throw away a business card. So I kind of laugh at all the guys that I speak alongside with at these events. You know, they're usually three day events and you have, you know, five or 10 speakers in a day and they're all leaving business cards on the, you know, in front of each one of the, you know, people, you know, before they speak. Yeah. And then when you leave, you see all the, you see all the business cards still sitting there on the table and some of them are on the floor, but I've never yeah. seen my book left on the table and I've never seen it on the floor and I've never seen it on the trash can as you're walking out. Thank God. Right. Um, and yeah. I, <laughs> um, and so that it really, again, is a difference, right? This is a, a fantastic Absolutely. business card yeah. put on the shelf and they'll refer to two or three years later. Cause like, Oh, there was that guy yeah. that spoke about that kind of thing. Yeah. Melanie, oh. Melanie has a great story about um, her book life legacy challenge. She did Ted talk with that book. If you haven't seen her Ted talk, you can check that out on YouTube, but Melanie tell everyone about the guy in the Japanese prison who read your book. Oh, wow. I like the way you tell it better, but I'll tell it. <laughs> <laughs> Jen is a great, she tells the story with such passion because she got the letter. So um, I wrote a book from my TED Talk, um, The Life Legacy Challenge. And somehow it was an American citizen who is in a Japanese prison because of this fraud thing. He got he got taken by one of those frauds, you know, where they call you and tell you to send him the money to for gold. They need blah, 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 blah. So he ended up in a Japanese prison and he got my book and he was so inspired. He wrote me a letter saying that um, his book has given him a lifeline while he's in prison, that he's going to write his story. So this doesn't happen to anybody else. And they up, end up in prison because of a scam. So just think about, you never know whose hands your book is going to go into. Like you can change the world. You can change, even if you change one person's life. So some of it is about, yeah, getting new clients for yourself and opening those doors. But there's that other part of the whole thing about inspiring someone, um, changing their life life, changing generations. There's books that have gone on for decades and hundreds of years that have inspired, continue to inspire people. And so why I hope you're being inspired and you want to write with us, remember to go to check out the link for the book writing camp. It's bookwritingcamp.com, bookwritingcamp.com. I, I think Andy's going to put a link up as well. So we have yeah, a, so another link. link. Go there. So think about, you know, there's a couple of reasons you write that book because as Andy said, millions. Okay. From one book, he's made $2 million. Hello. So even if you invest 
in writing the book with us and then you publish the book, even if you make a twenty, thirty thousand dollar investment in that whole process and giving books away, and if you're gonna make two million dollars, would you rinse and repeat that process? I think so. Yeah. I think that's a no brainer. That's way cheaper than running, like you said, an ad in the Super Bowl. And you don't even know if you're gonna get anything from that ad in the Super Bowl. I trust me, I was in the TV business sell, selling airtime. I, this is really bad to say, but we didn't necessarily believe in buying commercials. Like the cable stations wanted us to buy commercials on the cable station to promote our TV station. And my former husband always just said, nah, I just don't think it's a good investment. I'm thinking, but that's what we sell. So that <laughs> goes to tell you, you know, we, we bought uh, things, uh, other types of advertising and not didn't, didn't necessarily invest, I guess, because we figured we could add on our own, uh, do TV ads on our own TV station. But just to, you know, put that in your, your cap and think about it. So, um, and so many people are just sitting around right now wondering what to do. I just saw a post with uh, our friend Sandy Masori and she's like, I'm just not motivated. I know I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And then, you know, when this is done, you'll think I was in a coma during that time for, for six weeks, eight weeks. I just was in a coma. So snap out of it. Get yeah. out of your coma, slap you around, yeah. get your book written, join us for three days and come on this fabulous journey that you feel like, oh my gosh, you know what I did? Just think of what you can tell your friends. You know what I did during this whole thing went on? I wrote a book. I wrote a book. And now guess what? I have published the book and then a few weeks after you say, and guess what? I got my first client from a book that I wrote during this whole time instead of sitting on my tush. And, and I promise you, you know, if you don't want to exercise, I get that. And you want to eat chocolate cake. So I know Nobby's on there and he loves eating cake. So you can still eat cake and write at the same time. That's allowed in our book writing camp. You can eat whatever you want. Um, so we're just motivating you to get something that you feel really proud of and that you accomplished something in just three short days of this whole epidemic being stuck on your sofa. Yeah. And if you're worried, I was just going to say, if you're worried about like you have a lot of people at home, right? Like you've got a house full of kids or you've got, a, you know, all these people that are interrupting you. Don't worry about that. We're going to be doing it live and then we're going to be having breaks. So it's OK. You know, you can go in your room and shut the door or whatever for the times that we're that we're doing the training. But, you know, just don't worry about that kind of stuff. Like you you're you're here now. This is the time to do it. Yeah, you know, you, uh, Amel, you brought up a couple stories there and it just triggered so many memories that I've had with my books that are, that are pretty cool. I, I wrote another book called Today's CBD Oil um, and um, I, I changed companies. So I went from the one company when I wrote the book that I was with and then I changed companies because there was just a better product out there, uh, a better system, a better group of people to work with, founders and that kind of stuff. And so um, uh, when I changed, I went to an event where one of the, the lead founders, the president of the organization of Viseo is the name of the company, um, was present, was there. And uh, I got introduced to him while I was at the event. And when I shook his hand, he goes, I recognize you. And I go, you do <laughs> you recognize me from what? And I was so happy uh, to meet this guy because he's a multi-millionaire and runs this fantastic company, one of the top 50 healthcare companies in the world. And when he said he recognized me and he goes, I know, I have your book. You. I have your book because my picture is on the cover of the book. And he goes, yeah, my book. And so that gave me instant credibility with him. I immediately was able to do an interview with him. I, he gave me a cell phone number. It was like instantaneous. I went from an average person in the audience, right? That was there like, you know, you know trying to figure out this company to an authority in the very thing that I was there to meet him in. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got so excited. I almost choked. Um, <laughs> and, I like, and, and so I had another book there. I signed my book because I always carry my books in my backpack when, wherever I go. And so I signed the book to him and gave it to him. So now he had a signed copy. So that that's one of them I want to make sure and tell you. It'll I give you that. instant credibility, instant, you know. Yeah. I've had them on a, on a plane with me where you're sitting next to somebody, they ask you what you do and you say, blah, blah, blah. And they go, oh, really? Uh, and I say, yeah, I wrote a number one best-selling book and here, let me just go ahead and give you a copy. And then right, right again, you, you have instant credibility. So um, again, I just, there's so many stories that I could think of about what, where the book kind of just kind of steps you yeah. up a little bit in somebody's opinion uh, of, of who you are. I want to get to a question right here that was, I think it's a really important one to ask you. It's from Hannah from uh, Hawaii. And she asks a question for Jen. Is this writing camp only for business owners? No, it's not. We're actually just going to be going through the writing process. So if you have a fiction book or if you have any, any type of book, um, whether you write a book for, like Melanie was saying, to leave a legacy of, of your own story, or you write a book for your business, or you're writing a fiction book. If you love writing fiction, there's 
There's a lot of people who really have really good stories in their head and they need to get them on paper. So it's not just for business owners. We're just going to go through the writing process. We're going to go through your title, book cover, all that kind of thing. And then we will talk on the last day about how to make money with your book. And we can touch on some stuff for fiction and nonfiction. Awesome. We've actually kind of published enough. both. We've published children's books, fiction, nonfiction, journals, planners, right. everything. <laughs> Very cool. Hannah's watching on YouTube, by the way. That's very cool. Awesome. And Hawaii. Hi, Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, Nabi says, start writing today. If you wait until tomorrow, then today is a lost opportunity. Wow. I yeah, Nabi's a best-selling author as well. Yeah. yeah, in the money space. Yeah, financial. Very, very cool. Um, all right. So uh, what about this thing? That the hardest thing for many of the people when I've coached people, because I've coached about 800, somewhere in the neighborhood of eight, 900 people, I can't remember, I lost count, uh, in writing their book. And the, usually the biggest hurdle is the title <laughs> and the subtitle uh, and how you can kind of move those around. Like some people sometimes think the title, you know, they like, um, I could tell you honestly, when I was up, I did a hot seat on that day, the, again, that I was sleeping in my truck. Um, I had this title in my head, Falco walking with God and the dog. And the, the people mo moderating the hot seat really weren't fans of my title. And they said, you know, you, you may be too in love with your title uh, and you may, may need to change it. Now, this isn't a very good story because I didn't, I didn't take their advice. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what happened. All right. I didn't take their advice. I was stuck on that title because I did personally. I fell in love with that title and I, did, I could not get rid of it. Well, this book didn't go number one. I failed to go number one and because I didn't take the advice of the experts that I had entrusted with my story and shared, you know, and I think I might have sobbed on the stage. I, I, I lately I've been sobbing yeah. lately uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't follow their advice and I should have used it possibly as somewhere in the subtitle or something like that. It didn't go number one. I had to work at it later on and bring it to number one be only after I built some authority and some uh, notoriety. Mm -hmm. And so that changed um uh you know later on but the title subtitle is you got to be you, you got to be open to possibly any suggestions the experts have that let's let's call it something else and let's yeah. do this because it's really important who wants to speak on on the issue yeah title? i'll just make it a quick story that we just had a conversation with one of our authors that's going to be publishing his book soon and he had a title that he liked and um, he wasn't like set on it, but he liked it. But when we put that title into Amazon and we're searching who, what is this title? What happens if we type this title into Amazon, which is a search engine. If anyone knows what a search engine is, a browser, like, you know, <laughs> Amazon is a search engine. So if you don't have the right title or keywords in your subtitle, people can't find your book. So we put the, the title into the search and there was about a hundred results of some of the books were the exact title. And, it, mm -hmm. and some of the books weren't even um, the same industry that he's writing his book about. So then we you know, kind of brainstormed and came up with the 10 different titles that some have the words in it, some don't, but we didn't want the exact same title. So that's some of the tips and some of the things we're gonna be going over in the book writing camp. Mel? Yeah. And it's, um, you know, the keywords, right? So it's who the book is for, what problem you're solving. That's part of the subtitle too. So think of, and the benefits. So who, th when you're making your title, who the book is for, the problem you're solving and the benefits. So those are some of the things that are important and what people don't think of, like we use software and all kinds of different searches to figure out the keywords, your topic. Um, so we kind of have this behind the scenes thing of what we're searching for. And like Jen said, one of those many things is looking up other titles. And if there's a bunch of other books, well, how are you going to be found? So what's yeah. going to make your book different and stand out so people are finding you? So there's yeah. a whole, uh, besides what we just talked about, there's other things that we're going to go over for title and subtitle. And like you said, Andy, don't get married to something because it may have actually nothing to do with your book. There, I tell the story and I, I, I got to pull this guy's book out because I don't remember the name of the title of the book, but it said something about something blah, blah, blah on golf. It was golf, like how to, how to do, how, to, how golf and something. And, I'm, and the cover had a picture of a golf course on it. And it was like a cartoon drawn golf course. So I'm thinking, oh, this is like a book on golf. And I opened up, it was a relationship book about divorce. <laughs> right. That I'm makes like, no sense. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. I didn't get it at all. 
So, you know, he, but he was, but, but he goes, don't you get the metaphor? It's like divorce is like golf. And I'm like, no, dude, I really don't get the metaphor. And I don't know that most people are going to get that metaphor. So yeah, you know, you got to think about all those things. Don't get, yeah. and I, I love to say, don't get too tied in. To right. Something. And the catchy phrases, I know, like you said, Andy, you didn't follow the advice of the, of the people that were teaching you, yeah. but you, you were set on that title and it is pretty catchy, but the rhyming words and catchy phrases, those aren't, those don't always sell the best. So you can't, don't be set on those. If you have, you know, rhyming words or catchy phrases. And what I, you said too was the experts, right? You're yeah. getting to work with us as experts. Yeah. We charge tens of thousands of dollars to work with us one-on-one. -on -one, so you're going to get us for the weekend and have our ear all weekend to yeah. ask us, not just, not just to work on your book, but to ask us questions. Yeah. And I don't want to name names, but there was a, a book that came out from a famous person, famous because she was abducted. I'm not going to say her name, but you'll probably figure it out when I tell you the name of the book. It was called My Story. And I just thought whoever has helped her publish that book, I felt so bad for her because My Story is the worst title you could ever use because how many books, if you type in My Story on Amazon, come up? Over like, I don't know, 3,000 or more. It's ridiculous how many books come up. Now, of course, if you type in her name and you know her name, you're going to find it. But if you were yeah. looking for an abduction story and you didn't know anything about her, you would never type in my story. So it was just the <laughs> worst title. I'm just like, yeah, I don't think that's a very good title. So I don't know if she's probably written more books and maybe those are better. I haven't looked up her books to see the title. But don't name your book my story. That's a really good tip. <laughs> or my book. Yeah, my book. <laughs> hey, uh, Jen, Robin says to call him later. So, uh, okay. so you guys can do a Zoom call. <laughs> sounds good. Apparently, I'm your secretary now. Uh, I'm not sure how this all worked out. And, and David Everett says he's sorry. He just woke up. It's 1030, David. It's 1030. <laughs> This is my neighbor. So I got uh, I got a friend that's just like two houses down, and I got Nobby, my friend, who's all the way in Australia. He's up at three o'clock uh, in the morning watching us here. So awesome. we have a, a, an international uh, author. I'm gonna go ahead and show this uh, part of the. Uh, oops, uh oh, I did it again. Um, so it's a three day virtual book writing camp, April sixteenth, seventeenth, and eighteenth, uh, and um, it's virtual. So in that's you know safe distancing and all that kind of stuff. It's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, that's yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I, 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 you know what? I have this idea, and I don't know if I should. I'm going to share it today. I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw it out there and see if you're interested. Um, I would love to interview uh, anybody that go. I would offer to, as a bonus, that I will interview uh, anybody who authors through your camp on the Facebook Live TV show. And we'll broadcast it across all the platforms and awesome. I'll even give them the recorded uh, uh, interview uh, for anybody that opts into your uh, program and, and writes their book. And I'd be, I'd be happy to interview them about <clears throat> what it is they do. And I make sure my, my throat is clear when I do that. Um, and so I would like to throw that as, an, uh, as a bonus. So don't forget that. Tell them uh, to make sure and get in contact with me or you, you uh, make them uh, get them in contact with me and uh, I'll, we'll do an interview and talk about their book and, what the book's about and all that kind of stuff. That would be awesome. I think that'd be pretty cool. Well, inner thanks. Eddie. That's just a wonderful, wonderful bonus. We're going to have to add that in um, safe distancing. <laughs> Nami says. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll add that into our, our, our material. That's incredible to be on your show. They would love awesome. that. Very cool. You know, I also want to say that uh, uh, Jen and Mel <clears throat> and not Melanie Foster. Do you guys know Melanie Foster? I do. Yeah. yeah. I met her I, at, I, at an event, the same type of events that we've met I, at. I constantly struggle at putting you two, your two names together. Yeah. All and she has dark hair like you, Melanie. So you kind of look similar. <laughs> yeah. Brown hair. Yeah, mastermind, I, I struggle to do that. So anyway, um, you guys are in our mastermind group and, uh, and, and part of that group. And I, I want to say that um, I know from them being in our group that you could not be taught by, by two or three, because there's a third person teaching, Kathy's going to be in there, uh, better people. They are so full of ideas. Uh, when we get on our, our weekly calls, they're now weekly, they used to be bi-monthly, but our weekly calls, uh, the ideas and the support that they give is incredible. Uh, and so I, 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 just, I think you're silly uh, for not taking them up on this offer uh, for three days to have a book, in, you, know, you know, develop the concept and get you started. And that's the hardest part is getting over that first hump of uh, beginning to put pen to paper, fingers to keys on a, on a computer yeah. or uh, speak into your phone and begin to dictate it. Whatever it is that you're going to do to write your book, the hardest part is getting started. 
and, and then getting that motivation to continue to the end. And then the last thing you talk about, and I just, this came to mind as I was talking about that. Do you talk about that? Um, it doesn't have to be perfect to publish. Do you talk about that issue? Because that's the other thing. I think the ending part, that was, I think the three years of this book that I could never say it was done. <laughs> I would kept reading, I kept reading it. And, and, and then I would talk with my editor and talk about, you know, moving things around and that kind of stuff. At, at one point I just had to say, okay, this is, this is, this is good. And I'm going to publish it and, and, and actually push the button for publishing. Is that, do you talk about that, that issue? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We'll be talking about that issue. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, well, I, I've written my book. Well, it's two thirds done, you know, and then they don't finish or something mm -hmm. comes up where they keep making excuses. So yeah, we are going to touch on that and getting over that hurdle. And then we'll also talk about the, per the perfection stuff and the editing. Do you want to talk about that, Melanie? Yeah. I mean, people get into that. We tell people, uh, you know, edits and typos are like weeds. You think you got them all and then more crop up. You're thinking, I had 20 people read this book. How can there still be misspelled words in here? It just happens. So you have to get over it. And the thing is, if you don't get your book out there, it's not working for you. Right. And you can always, this is the other secret that most people don't know is that you can always go back and re upload your manuscript. So after you get it published and you physically have it in your hands and um, maybe you see some other things, you can correct those things and then re upload your book. And if, if you self publish, that's if you, if you have control of your publishing, right. That's Depending true. on how you publish. Traditional yep. publishers don't let you do that. <laughs> and most um, a hybrid publishers don't, don't let you do it. But if you have an independent yeah. publisher like Jen and I, then then you can do that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind. But you have to just get sometimes you just have to let it go out into the universe and get your book to start working for you. And yeah. think, like, Andy spent three years on that one book. Just think of all the lives that could have changed because his is really that one was more of a prayer book. How many more lives it would have touched? It had three years mm -hmm. sitting in the dark that it could have been um, helping people with their life. Yeah. And, and don't think like, I don't know if you've, if you've read Keller Williams, the one, that's a really good book if you haven't read it, but it had a typo on the first page and I'm sure I've seen her, typos in Harry Potter books as well. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to get it out there. Yeah. There's another book and I, now the author's escaping me. Maybe you know the name of the author, but it's uh, the, the war of art. You know, that book? it I've talks about, about it talks about resistance. So you might, there's some really good stuff about how you, you have all these things in your life that cause you resistance and don't get you started. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think resistance uh, for one of those things is actually, is, is pushing that button for publishing <laughs> that book. Yeah. Yeah. That it's just like, you're, it's so scary yeah. because one of the things you think that somebody's going to read it, that's a bigger authority than you. And they're going to, you know, squash you or, or put you down. None of those things happen. Really, the only people that attack you are the people that are jealous of you or are afraid of you because you took that step that they were too afraid to, to take yeah. or they didn't do the thing that, you know, they're, they're afraid that you're going to be competition. Those are the people that tend to attack you. So don't don't think about all these evil things that may happen to you because they're not going to happen. I'm telling you, I, I published some pretty horrible books. Um, <laughs> And uh, and that's because I didn't have professionals. This one I did all by myself and didn't have anybody really review it. And I did all myself. And, it, and I had to pull it off of Amazon because it was a horrible book. The the concepts <laughs> are fantastic. It's just the way that it was written was not that yeah. fantastic. So, um, but yes. I, I did buy. Yeah, what's that? I was like, adding on to what you're saying is like you know um, you don't become famous or you don't get to where you are unless you have haters, right? Once you start having critics and haters, then you know you made it. So I always <laughs> tell people, be you need to celebrate. Oh my gosh, someone criticized me? Yay. That means they're paying attention and wanted to take the time to do that. And you know, and most of those people that are critics, they're not the ones stepping into the arena. So when you look at political critics, theater critics, they're not out making a movie and putting themselves out there. They're not in the arena. So um, jump into the arena. Come come join us for the book writing camp and, and jump into the arena. Absolutely. And just to support what I was saying about Jen and Mel is uh, Robin, uh, you gals, gals have come a long way in the years since we first met. Congrats uh, to you both. Okay, you too, Andy. <laughs> and that's from Robin. Funny. Thanks, Robin. <laughs> Uh, and yes, I, again, um, uh, there, you just, you can't, you can't miss this opportunity. Uh, this, these three days, uh, the 16th, 17th, and 18th will, will be life changing. Um, and, and, and you have to follow through, you have to actually push the publish button. <laughs> you have to do those things, but it will be life changing. If you just get off your duff, uh, yesterday I said something, I really can't say the whole thing today, but I said something yesterday, like you got to shut your pie hole and you got to get off your ass 
right? <laughs> because that's what we're stuck doing. We're sitting here eating, yeah. right? The, the, the sales of uh, fast food and food have increased immensely since this pandemic. Yeah. Um, uh, views on Netflix and all the wasted time things that you can do has all gone up. Alcohol consumption has gone up. Marijuana usage has gone up. So let's, let's, uh, let's, okay, you've done that now, right? You felt sorry for yourself or whatever it is and you hate being stuck, whatever you're doing. Yeah. Let's do something else. Let's uh, do something to change the world and change your life. All right. Yeah. Sorry. I went on a little. You can write a book when you got done with this whole thing. What have you been up to? What are you doing? I'm writing my book. Oh, I've written my book. I mean, how cool is that to say? Everyone's jaw is going to drop. And just think by you taking action, how many other people you may influence to take action, whether it's not writing a book, but it could be something else, to take action, to move them forward, to get them off their depths so they're not depressed. So by you taking this and, and sharing with people that you're writing a book and that you wrote a book, you're going to help a lot of other people to motivate them too. Absolutely. Uh, Ray, my friend Ray Montero just uh, put this up here. <clears throat> Haters are elevators. <clears throat> and that's back to that comment that the people that uh, the, the, the only bad comments I've got on, uh, you know, any of the platforms where people can leave you bad comments are my mm -hmm. competitors. I have the, the competitors are the nastiest <laughs> people and, and what they write as far as comments. And I've always been able to track them down and show that they were competitors that were afraid wow. that I was doing something more than them, but uh, haters are elevators. Use them as elevators. I love that, Roy, yeah. that's awesome. That's a great thing. All right, Jen, any last words before we uh, land this plane? Yeah, I was I was just going to say, you know, take action today. Uh, we are going to go over some tips on writing the book. So some of you who feel like it's such a big, you know, weight on your shoulders that you're going that it's going to take forever to write this book, know that in the 3 days writing you are going to have that outline and all that and we're going to give you all the tips to have your book written so you can have it done on the timeline that you want, but if you want it to be 2 weeks, 30 days, you'll have your book written. Yeah. yeah. So, yep, join us. You have the opportunity to be with three international best-selling authors. You're going to be with experts. You're going to learn step-by-step -step how to do your book. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I don't know that we'll ever do this again. Um, and if you've been wanting to do this, now is the time to do it, to say that you did it. And guess what? We're going to have a blast on top of it all. And yes, we allow eating cake and snacks during that time. All out. Yeah. Well, and I don't know if you, I don't know if any of you know, but Melanie and I, Melanie's very first, um, what, uh, what do you call it, a joint venture, JV um, partnership that we did was a book writing retreat in the Dominican Republic. So during this virtual book writing camp, I might just be at the beach. I'll have a virtual background. I'm going to be at the beach. I don't know where you guys want to be, but I'm going to be at the beach to be kind of make some memories back from when we did our first book writing um, camp, our book, first book writing retreat at the Dominican beach uh, five years ago. So you can right. you can do the same if you want to do a virtual background you can be on the beach too in your house <laughs> the key to any success is to do it now take action so we um, are here to inspire you to take action to get your book written come join us for three days and it's next week so um get off the, well you can stay on the sofa i'll say get off the sofa you can stay on the sofa and join us for the retreat Right. Hey, can somebody let me know if that link that I put in there works? Um, I, I was going to try to go to Facebook. What? Oh, we'll get an echo if I hit what it needs to uh, to go on uh, to that thing there. Um, I, was, I was just looking for a couple other comments here to make sure that we don't have any questions that I missed because I got so I got so engrossed in everything we were talking about, and I think I missed a couple. I come just for a cake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nobby, I, I, I probably need to explain this. <clears throat> uh, when I uh, before I became a cop, I was a magician. I did magic. Um, at no a lot way. Of yeah, at, no. Uh, and that was my stage name was Andini. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and yes, there are all kinds of different ways of um, of saying really weird things along with that. But anyway, um, uh, we are only. Yeah, says, make it happen. Oh, I oh like wait, hold that. on. Hold on. Nice. Make it happen. All right. So let's get your book written. Let's make it happen and join us for our book writing camp, bookwritingcamp.com. Nice. Book or you can camp. go to the link that that Andy has in the, in yes. the uh, okay. notes. So hopefully it worked. Nobody's answering me. They're too busy making fun of me. It, it works. I, I just tested it. Oh, did you? Okay, cool. All right. Awesome. As All long right. as you copied I'll... and pasted it properly. <laughs> I do. It just looked funny when I posted it. It, it just looked odd to me. But okay. all right. So that's been great, Mel. Again, I can only say this. I have to say this one more time. You 
are making a huge mistake <laughs> if you don't simply at least click on the link and, and get to know uh, the women there and, and what it is they're doing, read through uh, the, the landing page and then make a decision to get it done because uh, this is there's no better opportunity. Uh, I, I know that they've made it uh, you know, as affordable as possible for you to do something that's going to change your life. It is it's again, I know them and, and they will and they will show you some great stuff. They're, they're fantastic people. All right. With that, I think that's it. Anything else? Let me just make sure there's nothing else. Did anything trigger in your mind <laughs> before we go? I'm good. Thanks, Andy, for having all us right. on the Yeah, thanks for having us on. It. You're welcome. And thanks to all my friends. Apparently, uh, according to uh, David, these are my only friends. But no, I have more friends than just you guys. But I, I'm glad you joined. Make sure and share this with anybody that you think may uh, have a book in them or they've been talking about writing a book. Share this with them, whether it's the YouTube channel or the, 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 the Periscope, which is on Twitter or the Facebook page. That way uh, they can get this information and uh, understand that there's something available for them to get their book started and get to that road to uh, finishing a book and getting it published. All right, that's it. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Mel. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>